This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. This would be the point where a normal person might go bad. But I had been living inside a cage for so long that not even that choice was available to me. There was a time, just once, when I tried approaching a group of girls with that sort of reputation. The result was pathetic. In that country town, even the delinquents were mindful of appearances. They turned their backs on me and walked away without a word. Shunned by even those lowest on the totem pole. For a long moment, I just stood there, rooted to the spot. And then I found myself looking up into the sky. It looked no different from the day I'd gazed out the window with my mother. Had Mom always been this alone? Was that why she'd spent so much time watching something that never really changed? Now that I was well and truly isolated, I'd begun to think more about her feelings. It seemed like a moment worthy of a little sobbing, but it just wasn't happening. On that day in the rain, I'd used up my lifetime's supply of tears. All that was left was a parched, withered husk of a human being. For one long year, I did nothing but watch the sky change slowly above me. But soon enough, I was pulled down into the muddy stream once again. Like I said, the flashbacks are long. Definitely very long, but still very good. It was a little before the start of summer vacation. Our teacher had fallen ill that afternoon. The final lesson was replaced by a study hall, which I had spent gazing dully out the window. That exercise in pure boredom finally complete, I was walking sluggishly down the road towards my grandparents' house, just turning the final corner into our street. Something was wrong about this picture. A shiny black luxury car was parked along the thickly hedged road in front of our house. The Kawamoto family didn't own a private automobile. My grandfather apparently had one back in the days when the business was doing well, but it was one of the first things to go when the recession hit. The negotiations with the Sakaki family had always been held in the business office by the station, so it was hard to imagine why such a car could have possibly come. Oh, um, it's probably... <laughs> Binky! The band. For a little while, I dawdled outside, staring curiously at the car with its thickly tainted windows. But after two or three minutes, a voice called to me from inside our house. Uh-oh, she's being nice to me, what's wrong? I was startled. The friendly attitude was one thing, but it was the very first time since I'd arrived that my grandmother had called me by name. She wouldn't have done that without a very good reason. Her grandparents suck! After quickly removing my shoes, I let her usher me into the parlor. It was the first time in a good four years that I'd been in that room. The instant I crossed the threshold, five men in black suits stood up simultaneously and bowed in greeting. Oh! Wow! Isn't this convenient? As I blinked in bewilderment, my grandmother spoke, a strange little smile twisting her face. And with that, she sat me at the head of the table. The dusty air of the rarely used parlor tickling my nose, I looked around me. All five of the men had deeply serious expressions on their faces. To be honest, I wanted nothing more than to run away. As soon as the question left my mouth, a man seated to my left took control of the conversation. Press X to doubt. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think that's what this is about. What on earth was this man talking about? After the incident with Mom, my father hadn't showed up in this house even once. I understand that he, I understand that he had a busy professional life, but he didn't even bother to send me a message or place a phone call. Now they expected me to believe he was worried. Now, after a full year? Ridiculous. It was mystifying Grandma had even let them in the house, let alone with that simpering grin on her face. Didn't she understand this was nonsense? But soon I discovered that my grandmother's reactions were perfectly lucid, for reasons that had nothing to do with any of that. Isn't that great? Now I don't have to take care of your ungrateful butt. I mean, that's, that's really what she's saying. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, I just, I somehow don't think that that's actually how they feel. Ah, now I understand. This was a question with no choices. My grandparents had decided the answer beforehand, and were now unilaterally forcing me into it. I was so profoundly astonished at their naked self-interest that I couldn't even manage any anger. But it's not as if snapping at them would have achieved anything in the first place. Remaining with them was probably never really an option. When I stood for my seat, my grandmother spoke in a sickeningly sweet voice. <laughs> I want the car! <laughs> Yumiko's just like, peace out! I don't want to be with my terrible grandparents anymore. <laughs> I was about ready to vomit. From my grandmother's words, it seemed clear the Sakaki had... It seemed clear the Sakaki. They didn't even refer to him by name. Her dad is just known as the Sakaki. Dim. They had come to uh, with a clear offer in my hand. My return in exchange for restored financial support to the Kawamoto business. My grandparents had considered me a burden from the start, so I imagine they didn't exactly hesitate. It probably felt like selling some piece of junk from the backyard for a huge sum at an auction. I tried muttering the words, but couldn't manage much conviction. After all, I was scuttling around the same sordid web. How could I complain? I wasn't working for my food. I pulled all the clothes out of my chest of drawers, threw them onto my tatami mat, and scowled down at them. I wasn't speaking to my grandparents, the house, or even to my mother. It was a farewell to the person who had lived here, idly wasting day after empty day, accomplishing nothing but growing older. I spoke those words to confirm a simple fact. That room was nothing to me. It held nothing of me. One by one, I cut the clothes I'd worn in the place to shreds. The expensive-looking children's clothes I'd, bought with, with, I'd brought with me. The generic ready-made supermarket clothes my grandparents had bought me when the need arose. My middle school uniforms. My face an emotionless mask, I carefully chopped them into tiny pieces. My preparations were complete. Grabbing the scrapped clothes with both hands, I shoved them right back into my chest of drawers. It took less than a minute to toss my everyday belongings, art supplies, and sketchbooks into my bag. Just like that, my life in that place was over. I didn't look back. After a stiff, formulaic goodbye to my grandparents, I dropped by my school for a few brief formalities, then began the journey home. Yay! Oh, we got the animated background, too. Yay! Of course, I hadn't seen that home in many years. I had only the vaguest memories of the house itself. I was sincerely happy to be leaving my grandparents behind, but that didn't make it any less it didn't make me any less uncertain about the new life being thrust on me so abruptly. The car headed north at high speed, moving from the coastline into the outskirts of the metropolitan area. We were heading for the heart of West Tokyo. Are we there yet? An elderly man who had introduced himself as the chief of the clerical department as my at my father's company was behind the wheel. Glancing briefly at his GPS screen, he answered my question in a calm tone. Guys, will this be where the car accident happens? 60 kilometers as the crow flies. That was the distance from my grandparents' house to that of my father. In the end, my mother had never managed to return to a place less than an hour away by car. And I myself was only coming back on someone else's power. I didn't have the slightest idea what was coming next. I wasn't particularly hopeful, but I didn't feel much in the way of despair either. It would be enough if I could just spend my days quietly until I finally became an adult. With that thought, I closed my eyes and waited for the car to arrive at its destination. Just as the chief secretary had told me, we reached my new home about 30 minutes later. No car accident? It's a Christmas miracle. The house was very different from the patchwork image I had sewn together from fragments of my childhood memories. Far more magnificent than I remembered it. From the outside, the building itself looked like a western-style mansion straight out of a manga. The spacious gardens were surrounded by a high wall. The grounds were covered in so many tall, beautiful trees that it could have been a park. 
I had hazy memories of those fiends, but after years in the country, their scale and magnificence took me by surprise. But, on an emotional level, the sight of left me cold. My father's actions were one thing, my obedient return at his whistle was another. No matter how splendid the house might have been, when I thought about the foundation it was built on, my thoughts naturally took a turn for the bitter. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, you gotta understand, there were five car accidents in the first two routes. It was, it was, it was, actually, wait. No, yeah, five, five. I'm like, was there six? No, 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 it was five. It's still way too many for one game, though. Unless that game is Grand Theft Auto. I whispered the words to myself too softly for the driver taking my luggage from the trunk to hear. Passing through a finely wrought metal gate, I returned to the house I spent my first years in. The uninspiring luxury was all the more pronounced inside the house itself. As I took off my shoes and looked around the gleaming entrance hall, I heard footsteps approaching from a side passage. Yumiko, Oh my gosh, guys, it's wonderful. He's so happy to see us. What a great dad. He definitely isn't a scumbag. It probably would have taken me some time to recognize the person standing in front of me, if not for the recent photograph I'd seen in a certain magazine one year before. Also, this guy hasn't aged a day, so... Yeah, I, I have no intention of playing Grand Theft Auto. Maybe... Maybe I would play Bully. Which is like Grand Theft Auto, but in a school. But even that, I'm like, that's a little adult for my channel. But so is this game, so you never know. Face to face with my father for the first time in what felt like decades, I saw a middle-aged man with a reasonably healthy complexion, but a subtle hint of something like gloom in his eyes. He, what eyes? They're closed. <laughs> As I lowered my head in a polite bow, my father continued in the same cheerful tone. <laughs> Bro, do you have any idea the life I've had to live? I was more taken aback than anything else. Considering the way he had treated Mom and me up until that point, his aggressively friendly attitude was incomprehensible. From what I could remember, my father and I had only spoken a bare handful of times when I was a child, and certainly never like that. His motives weren't clear to me, but the sudden attempt at intimacy was off-putting. I didn't quite know how to respond to it. For the moment, I just wanted to cut the nauseating conversation short. Press X to doubt! <laughs> With another bow to my father, I made my way past him, heading for the one part of the house I remembered well. My very first place of refuge. The bedroom in which I had spent so many hours as a young child. I climbed the stairs and found my room without the slightest hesitation. Remembering its location so exactly prompted a brief swell of nostalgic emotion, but that soon gave way to the recurring sense of disgust. My memories there weren't exactly happy in their own right. The room I entered for the first time in years was so completely changed that I couldn't help raising my voice in surprise. The badly mismatched desk and bed had been cleared away, and their place was a complete arrangement of fancy furniture and pretty little luxury items, exactly the sort of thing that might appeal to a girl of my age. <laughs> Every part of this decor seemed as if it could have come straight out of the set of a movie. The room was filled with fragile, <laughs> ephemeral things. It felt as though they'd disappear like soap bubbles if I actually touched them. Then what's the point of having them? Normally, they would have made me happy, but at the moment, it seemed a hollow gesture. <laughs> Sitting on my bed, I murmured those words to myself. Oh, Finally managed to return to that house, but my mother wasn't with me. All I had there was a forced, artificial welcome from the man who had broken her. Would I simply resume the same numb, miserable life in a different setting? Staring up at the ceiling, I could feel the familiar jet-black sludge growing thick inside my chest. I fought down the crushing feelings of despair as best I could, closed my eyes, and fell asleep. Oh boy, I love going to a certain place in the metropolitan area. just my favorite. The next day! My father had arranged beforehand for my transfer into an all-girls school some 20 minutes from the mansion car by car. It was a very prestigious institution. I'd actually recognized the name. I felt badly out of place, uncomfortable with my new uniform and the beautiful school building. 
Classmate A is back, but now Classmate A is a girl, so it must be a different one. I could hear the whispers from all sides. Entering the classroom, I sat quietly at an open desk as far from the others as possible. Yeah, that's kind of what I do. There was an improvement in one regard. The talk about me wasn't particularly cruel or hostile. <laughs> Look, some of us have resting stink faces, okay? What can you do? But essentially, I was treated just like before. My classmates interacted with me in a business-like way when necessary, and otherwise largely pretended I wasn't there. A school full of young ladies from upper-crust families was surprisingly uncomfortable in its own way. Yeah, having completed my formulaic introduction and the first day of classes, I found myself instinctively heading for the rooftop. After gazing up for a moment, I settled down against a concrete support near the edge of the roof and took out my sketchbook. I began to draw the sky above me. A simple pencil hatching, rendering the clouds and sky up in shades of gray. Just like the Bob Ross way. That afternoon, I couldn't stand to look at the world. Anything my eyes settled on repulsed me. That empty sky was the only thing I could bring myself to observe calmly. The driver held open the front door to the house for me. I was delivered to school and back. I didn't even have to open my own doors anymore. That extreme courtesy only intensified my discomfort. The household employees greeted me with smiles so soft and mild it was slightly nauseating. When I answered with a brief nod, they began to bombard me with words that's in rapid succession, their tone eager and openly professional. This... This definitely seems like it's longer than the other two flashbacks. But at this point, it's still pretty close. So I remember... I think it, I think it was Michiru's flashback was like, really? One, Michiru or Sachi. They both had long flashbacks, but one of them was particularly long. Climbing slowly up the stairs, I heaved a heavy sigh. Would they be putting on that sort of show every single day from now on? Their deference was so transparently artificial that it was painful rather than flattering. Given my current position, it might just be possible to order them to stop acting like that. But I didn't know what repercussions that would have, especially if they were to report it to my father. I ended up deciding it best to not make waves at such an early stage. Oh, hey! He's in a fancy, fancy room. You got the red carpet, that's and a fireplace. That's how you know it's fancy. I'd been able to postpone it for one day with excuses about my fatigue, but the time had come. If by a long time you mean, like, we've never had one before. A glass of wine in one hand, my father turned a radiant smile on me. Inside my head, I spat out the words, It's the first time! <laughs> Yeah, you know, again, I, the, I like Yumiko more the more I get to know her. I still don't excuse her for trying to murder Yuji when she first met him, though. From the moment I sat down in front of that luxurious dinner and my beaming father, I was immediately filled with a desperate longing to flee. <laughs> no, he's just a big fancy man with a big fancy house. I tried a little of the sautéed duck on my plate just to kill a few seconds, but it seems strangely tasteless and without texture. I, I want to try duck someday. I want to go to, like, a good restaurant that knows how to prepare it properly and try it. Ah, you flatter me. My father, still maintaining the same cheerful tone as the night before, complimented me at great length. Mm -hmm. All I could manage to do was nod and mechanically shovel the food placed in front of me into my mouth. Nom nom. Course after course, and I couldn't taste a thing. Had they even put any salt on these? It was like eating hunks of rubber. <laughs> maybe they maybe they didn't. <laughs> They're like, look, all you need is fancy ingredients. You don't need to know how to actually cook them. Carrying veins to my mouth solely for the sake of chewing on them didn't make for a pleasant dining experience. Gradually, I began to ignore my plate in favor of frequent sips of water. The tasteless food, Dad's barrage of praise, and myself 
sitting there passively, just accepting it all. Everything about the scene made me sick. My emotions only grew darker with each passing minute. That was all some bizarre whim of my father's. That, or a meaningless ceremony he was carrying out in pursuit of some hidden objective. What else could it possibly be? Yumiko. Oh yeah, funny story. I cut it all off like Mulan, and people hated it, so I grew it back. I felt my breath catch in my throat. That summer day, that day when the heat had poured down on me like a rain of molten iron. The moment when I had clawed at my chest and ha hacked at my own hair within a spasm of self-loathing, it all came flooding vividly back. I almost told him that I'd cut it short once. But what would be the point of explaining that to this man? It would only throw this little play into chaos. What on earth did my father mean by asking me a question like that? Why bring up the very thing that had always marked me as worthless? My father, a smile on his face, spoke those words in a casual tone of voice. His smile looks plastic. <laughs> Rising from my seat, I ran out of the room, both hands pressed tightly across my mouth. <laughs> oh, so sorry, sir! We forgot to put salt on the dock! <laughs> I could hear my father snarling at someone behind me, but I didn't have time to be worrying about that. This is why you need to salt your food! Acid burned in my mouth as I vomited the tasteless food out into the toilet bowl. None of it had the slightest flavor going down, but coming back up it was powerfully unpleasant. It seemed a bit unfair somehow. Well, that's because it's now mixed with your stomach acid. It's gonna make it taste bad. Um, it depends on how long this flashback will last. I will stop playing when I feel like stop playing, essentially. <laughs> Is this some kind of twisted joke? <laughs> wasn't my... Oh, wasn't my sex the entire reason he'd cast Mom aside? What on earth was my father thinking? How could he say that? Why? He'd never even looked at me before. This had to be some kind of a whim. He'd decided to play house for a while to appease his guilty conscience. Either that, or he needed to do so for work-related reasons. How long would it take before I could find a safe haven? This would be no better than living with my grandparents. No. In the countryside, at least, I wasn't expected to do anything. There were expectations of me here that made it even more agonizing. <laughs> Testing the acid rising once more from the depths of my throat, I descended into self-pity. I would truly have preferred to shut myself up in a dark shed, to reject the world and do nothing at all for the rest of my life. But so long as I needed food to eat and a bed to sleep in, I had no choice but to play alone with my father's momentary kindness. The thought triggered a new wave of nausea. Oh boy, we're back in a certain place in the met metropolitan area. Hmm. <laughs> One week passed. People often say that time flies when you're having fun. Perhaps it's true, because those first seven days seem to last a century. Doesn't seem fair, does it? Hanging my bag next to my desk, I pulled out my notes and textbooks. It was I was as isolated and out of place as ever in my new school. I'd been studying a good deal, but that was simply my way of killing the vast stretches of otherwise painfully empty uh, time I spent here. It certainly had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with my father's praise. Excuse me. I hadn't sketched for a few days now. For one thing, the weather had been dull and gray, so I couldn't look up without remembering that day. And I just hadn't been in the mood in the first place. Even if I opened my sketchbook today, I'd only end up with another drawing of the sky. As if I didn't have enough of those already. Those vaguely self-mocking thoughts stopped me on my way up to the roof, redirecting my path down to the lower floor. My life was a steady line from one meaningless moment to the next. Identical days trickled by. But there was one thing that had begun to change in the course of that week. Human beings are frighteningly adaptable creatures. 
The meals of my father that had at first repulsed me to the point of vomiting were gradually growing tolerable. Sometimes I hated myself for that. But little by little, I was coming to understand that it wasn't just the result of my mind acc acclimatizing itself to the situation. Oh, back in my day, I was friends with everybody. It definitely wasn't because I was heir to this big company. My father was making a genuine effort. With gentle advice and anecdotes about his own experiences, he tried to reassure me. Apparently, Dad had gone through many transfers in his student years, and always struggled with how to present himself to his new classmates. I was beginning to learn a number of surprisingly personal things about my father as he persistently tried to draw me into conversation. And he wasn't pushy or arrogant about it. He always seemed to be considerate of my point of view. Just as I'd heard, Dad was an extremely on an extremely tight schedule. Even when he returned home, it was extremely rare for him to stay overnight. More frequently, he would return to his company immediately after dinner. But that also meant he was coming home solely to share a meal with me. I gradually grew less prickly and slightly more communicative. By now, I could eat dinner with him without a hint of queasiness. Just as something was about to spill out of my mouth, Mom's pale, empty face had flashed before my eyes. I silently reminded myself, this man is responsible for my mother's suffering. That fundamental resentment hadn't faded. I wouldn't let it fade. Well, her mom's not dead yet. So, I guess I was wrong about that. Could change, though. Lying in bed in my darkened room, I fought things over. I was no less uncertain than when I first arrived at that place. But the reasons for that inner turmoil were beginning to change. My father's attitude towards me was becoming harder to process. At first, I'd simply been disgusted by his own over-familiarity. But, by that point, it was harder to dismiss at some bizarre... <laughs> to dismiss as some bizarre game. Sometimes I could almost take his friendliness at face value. You say that! There's This flashback ain't over yet! Even that remark about my hair might have been intended as nothing more than a casual compliment. Such positive interpretations were beginning to seem plausible. I tried mumbling negative words to myself, but the nagging doubts remained. My distant mother had grown kind when her condition improved. The situation was clearly different, but there was always the possibility my father had undergone a similar change in the years I'd, since I'd seen him last. Tossing and turning in my bed, I turned the questions over in my mind. I'd been so cold for so long, but little by little I could feel something like warmth returning to my body. I'll just end up being betrayed again. This time will be different. With two opposing answers battling indecisively in my mind, I waited for dawn to come. Oh, yeah, we're back in a certain place, a certain place. Two months after my return to Tokyo, my life was beginning to change even outside of the house. School didn't seem particularly unpleasant anymore. It wasn't so difficult being alone at that place, once you got used to it. So long as I quietly attended my classes, the entire day would pass easily enough. I never disliked studying, so once my mood took a turn for the better, I didn't it didn't feel like wasted time. The change in the seasons had brought more periods of clear weather. Oh, I'm like, what is that noise? That's her sketching. I'd resumed my habit of drawing on a daily basis. And as my mind grew calm, my art slowly began to change as well. My perspective, pointed straight up for so long, began to creep downward. Every once in a while, I'd include a townscape or two among my sketches. It wasn't exactly principled of me to be finding enjoyment in that life, but there was no point sulking forever. My sardonic feelings of self-reproach slowly faded. I began to look at the world around me more calmly. Even those brutally awkward interactions with the household employees had gotten more tolerable with the passage of time. After a few weeks, they picked up on my non-reactions and began to tone down their aggressive reproach. They would be generally they would generally back off after letting me know they were available if I needed them. That arrangement was much more comfortable for me. By then, I was actually was asking them for something every once in a while. After asking the maid to leave something uh, to have something call me when it would. 
<clears throat> After asking the maid to have someone call me when it was time for dinner, I returned to my room. Sitting down in front of my desk, I fought back over the last few months. My attitudes toward that new life were beginning to soften in many ways. The one exception, I was stubbornly continuing to keep my father at arm's length. His behavior hadn't changed. He continued to treat me kindly all the while. Nonetheless, I offered him nothing but brief monosyllabic answers, vaguely avoiding his questions. That's, that had only seemed natural at first. What else could he expect after he had treated my mother, after abandoning me for years? That resentment seemed to justify my behavior. But months had passed, and I couldn't just see any sign of the cruel man I'd thought he was, at least not when he was interacting with me. Nearly every night I rejected his gentle attempts to draw me into conversation. My father didn't seem to be letting that bother him, but I was beginning to feel increasingly guilty about my attitude. Yeah, it's tough. I personally don't think he's really changed that much, but I could be wrong. Well, no, he hasn't changed. He, in the present, he hired goons to attack his, to attack his daughter. So, uh, yeah, he, he's still definitely a slime ball. I threw that question up at my ceiling, knowing all too well that no answer would be forthcoming. It would be time for dinner soon. For a very different reason than before, I'd started to find that time somewhat painful. This man had interacted with me as something close to an ideal father for two straight months. That day, as always, all that came out of his mouth were words of praise and concern for me. Uneasy feelings smoldered away quietly inside my chest. My father spoke to me in a kind tone of voice. I couldn't endure his gaze. Gaze! His eyes are closed! I found myself hanging my head. I didn't dislike being praised, not at all. He was making time in an extremely busy life for me. I wasn't yet cynical enough to dismiss that. Sometimes I felt myself on the verge of being grateful. But no, not yet. That black grime was still inside me. There was always that other emotion struggling against my guilt. So long as that remained, I would never allow myself to get any closer to my father. He's like, okay, this is ridiculous. I felt myself twitch with surprise. Until that point, I had deliberately steered clear of that particular topic. I'd assumed my father was intentionally avoiding it as well, so the turn of the conversation came as a real shock. <laughs> no, 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 it's not bad at all. Again, if people don't have anything to say, don't feel like you have to type anything. I'm perfectly happy to, you know, just have lurkers in chat. Again, I'm kind of engrossed in this story right now, so I probably wouldn't be interacting with chat that much anyways. <laughs> And this way, we all get to enjoy the story, and people get free arty bucks, so it's win-win. My father slowly began to speak. He spoke about his feelings toward my mother, how it felt when she left, and behind everything, the constant stress of his incredibly demanding job had placed on their marriage. Everything my father told me had turned my image of him completely on his head. On its head! Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Arted bucks. Again, press X to doubt. In time, my increasingly isolated father began to seek comfort. He admitted that the affair described in the magazine article had happened at that time. お父さんも寂しかったんだ。会社でもいろいろとあって行けないことと知りつつも母さんを裏切るようなことをしてしまった。雑誌に記事が出た時、いた時、一番に考えたのは母さんを巻き込んではいけないということだったんだ。うん、
The actions that had seemed so inhumanly cruel at the time could also be explained by my father's story. After all, that lawyer never got the chance to speak with my mother. There was no proof he'd been sent to serve her with divorce papers. But, even so... Yumiko. Uh-oh, he mad now. My father looked straight at my face from across the table. I couldn't help myself. I returned his gaze. At some point, I'd forgotten to even to avert my eyes. Ooh, that's a toughie. Mmm. It was a gentle voice. I'd begun to think I would never hear a voice like that ever again, from anyone. And yet it was coming to me from him. The person whose acceptance, in a way, I'd always wanted most. Many thoughts flooded into my head in a confused jumble. Those words were more than powerful enough. My fragile defensive wall had finally sprung a leak. Yumiko. Sorry, they didn't salt the duck again. Can you believe it? <laughs> what klutzes? <laughs> I stood from my chair, turned away from that concerned face, and hurried out into the hallway. He's like, man, when am I finally going to just have a dinner with my daughter that doesn't end with her running to the bathroom? Like, come on. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Halfway covering my face with my right hand, I stumbled up the stairs as best as I could. On the way up, I caught a glimpse of a servant staring at me in shock, but I wasn't composed enough to pay that any mind. Oh, what's Yubiko doing? The world was growing hazy before I even reached my floor. Oh, wow, we find... Hey, it's a CG. Oh, this is interesting. Interesting CG of Yumiko. The world was growing hazy before I even reached the floor. And in the instant I closed the door to my room behind me, the tears came pouring down my face. One drop stained the ivory carpet beneath my feet, then another. It was hard to understand. I couldn't reconcile the man with the vicious, vulgar person the magazines described. There were so many things about him that confused me. But I couldn't believe he'd spoken those words for show. It sounded as if they'd come from the heart. Just as Mom had come to regret the cruel things that she said to me, perhaps Dad was simply trying to make up for his mistakes. Looking at it from that angle, it wouldn't be so hard to accept his apology. I don't think he's completely heartless, because he is still, like, using his money to support his, like, his wife and her family. But I definitely think he's fudging some stuff there, because, again, in the present day, he's like, Ah! Gotta get Yumiko on track. I know. I'll hire goons to attack her. This is great. Perfect idea. <laughs> mm. This is this is sad. I had one photograph of my mother left, safe in the memory of my mobile phone. But as always, her face was turned to the side. I couldn't read her expression. <laughs> Yes, it's okay for you to become happy. My life had been shades of gray for so very long. Little by little, I could see colors beginning to emerge. It was a pleasant feeling. 